Today we are going to talk about the fundamentals. In this class, we will use the Shogama Sutra to understand the fundamentals. There are basically two fundamentals. One is the root of beginningless birth and death. The root of reincarnation is our deluded mind. The second fundamental is the root of beginningless Bodhi Nirvana. The root of Nirvana and enlightenment is our pure mind. So we need to understand the difference between the two. Now let's look at the verses. The root of beginningless birth and death is the mind that ceases upon conditions and that you and all living beings now make use of, taking it to be the self-nature. This deluded mind ceases upon conditions. We are all very much clinging on and attached to external conditions. For example, if someone praises me, I'm very happy. If someone criticizes me, I'm very upset. So that means I'm totally attached to the external conditions. Every day my emotion is following what's going on externally. So if I'm attached to external conditions, then no matter how much good deeds I do, it is still creating reincarnation for myself. Buddha asked Ananda, why did you become a monk? Ananda replied very honestly, because I saw your 32 characteristics of greatness, which was supremely wonderful. The entire body had a shimmering transparency just like that of the crystals. So is that a good reason to become a monk? No, because you're basing your spiritual cultivation on someone's appearance which is going to change all the time. It's not reliable. That's why Buddha said that you and all living beings now make use of. This you is Ananda. Buddha is speaking to him. And we are all like Ananda. We are using the deluded mind as our self-nature. And we actually lost our self-nature because of that. The reason that Buddha expanded the Shagama Sutra is because Ananda, he has been learning with Buddha for 12 years, but he was still being controlled by the spell of the daughter of Matanji. He almost broke the sexual misconduct precept because of her. Ananda was the most learned disciple. Why did this happen? Because he didn't find the fundamental of cultivation as if he is trying to cook rice with sand. You will only get hot sand. You will not get rice. In order to have rice, we must have rice as the ingredient. So if we cultivate very hard, but we are using our deluded mind, then how can we reach nirvana? Now let's look at our pure mind. The primal pure substance of beginningless Bodhi Nirvana. It is the primal bright essence of consciousness that can bring forth all conditions. Because of conditions, you consider it to be lost. This pure mind is called primal because it is originally there. It is a mind before we start perceiving the external conditions before we start thinking, judging, and discriminating. That is our pure mind. This pure mind actually creates all the external conditions, but we don't know that. We are attached to external conditions and we lost our pure mind. So we unjustly lost our pure mind. It's like we are attached to a little bubble of the ocean and lost the entire ocean out of ignorance. So how do we know if we are using our deluded mind or our pure mind? In the sutra it says deluded mind has no substance apart from the objects, from the external conditions. If this thought or this emotion is coming from stimulants from outside, that's your deluded mind. If the stock actually has substance apart from the objects, apart from all external conditions, it still exists, that means it's your pure mind. For example, someone asked Ying Guang Master, have you seen anyone that went to the pure land? How do you know you can go to the pure land? 
Ying Guang Master answered very firmly, I don't need to see anyone that went to the Pure Land. Even if no one in the world chants Amitabha, I will still chant Amitabha and go to the Pure Land. Why is his faith so strong? Because he knows that chanting Amitabha is aligning himself with his pure mind. That's what he's supposed to do. That's who he is originally. He is residing in his pure mind. In conclusion, living beings lost sight of the original brightness. Therefore, though they use it to the end of their days, they are unaware of it and without intending to, they enter the various destinies. All of us lost sight of our pure mind. Even though we use it and we have it till the end of our day, we are unaware of it. That's why without intending to, we enter the six rounds of reincarnation. We actually don't deserve reincarnation. We are unjustly wronged into reincarnation. This arising that arises because of our ignorance and deluded mind, we create the 12 links of dependent origination. That's why we're reincarnating. So Buddha tried to explain this to Ananda with a very simple example. Buddha raised his golden arm and bent his five fingers into a fist. Then he asked Ananda, do you see? Ananda replied, yes, I see. Buddha asked, what do you see? Ananda replied, I see your golden arm and the shimmering fist. Buddha then asked, what do you see it with? Ananda replied, I see it with my eyes. I see it with my mind. Then Buddha very harshly berated him. No, that is not your mind. Ananda was startled and scared. He said, if this is not my mind, then what is it? Buddha then firmly replied, it is your perception of false appearances based on external objects that has diluted your true nature and has caused you from the beginningless time to your present life to recognize the thief as your son, to lose the eternal source and to undergo the wheels turning. This deluded mind is called the perception of false appearances based on external objects. First, we have the external objects. We call it the five dusts, form, sound, odor, taste, and touch. Because of the external conditions, we create a false appearances, a shadow image in our own mind. And we keep thinking about it. It becomes our perception. It creates our story. It creates our life. That's our alive consciousness. That is not us, but we think that's us. So we recognize the thief as our son. The deluded mind is a thief that's been stealing from us, but we see it as our true nature, as our dear son. That's why we are going through the wheels turning, the samsara. 18 years ago, I started learning Buddhism. I tried to do a lot of Buddhist work and to do a lot of ceremony and learn the Dharma. But deep down inside, I always felt a sense of emptiness as if something is still missing in my life and the sense of insecurity until I encountered the Shodama Sutra. Then I felt just like Ananda and I realized why. Because I've been trying to cook rice with sand. I will only get hot sand because I've been attaching to the external conditions, to the temple, to the master, to all the students. And because everybody is changing based on everyone's karma, I felt insecure. Everything is changing. When I realized that, I finally felt complete. I finally felt like I'm at home. I'm now safe and guarded and secure. So the Shragama mantra is the big white umbrella. When we recite the mantra, we are covered by the big white umbrella because we are residing in our home. We are safe and we are sheltered. That's why the Shragama Sutra is called everything ultimately indestructible. It is called the Samadhi of Suchness. Then you will realize 
realize the deluded mind is actually the same as the pure mind. The mind that is dreaming and sleeping is the mind that's awakened. We only have one mind. All you have to do is to recognize that you are dreaming. Wake up. That's all you have to do. You're naturally dwelling in your pure mind. It doesn't mean you won't have external condition of obstacles or afflictions. It just means whenever things happen, you will not be attacked to them. You will still be safe. You will be the owner of your own life. You will not be affected by the outside world. Lastly, I would like to share a story. There was a village of 500 monkeys. All 499 monkeys only have one eye. Only one have two eyes. So everybody laughed and poked fun at him. So he grew up very depressed and had very low self-esteem until one day he had the courage to go outside the village. Once outside, he saw other monkeys and much to his surprise, all the other monkeys have two eyes. Then he realized, I'm actually normal. After that, he lived happily ever after. So we are all supposed to have two eyes, which means we're all supposed to be dulling in our pure mind. That's who we're supposed to be. When we recite the name Amitabha, we need to have the right fundamental our pure mind. So before we start any cultivation, find our home, find our pure mind. If we chant Amitabha's name or cultivate for the rest of our life but using the deluded mind, then that will still be creating reincarnation for ourselves. So ponder upon this deeply. That's the class for today. Thank you for listening. Amitabha.